Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Brian and on this channel we do a little bit of everything. But in this video we're going to be working on my 1973-ish Moto Guzzi. I think it's an Eldorado. It might be something else, but I'm going to call it that for now. And in this episode we're going to take the forks apart and rebuild them and put the front end back together including a new front tire. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do for more riveting content like you're about to see. The spring is covered with grease from the factory because it's kind of exposed. There's no seal in there, so that's to protect it, keep it from rusting. I'm just going to leave that grease on there and set this aside. To take this apart, this piece threads onto this lower piece. I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but down in there, there's four notches, so it takes a special wrench or tube to go down and break this loose. I don't have that and I'm not going to buy that just for one time doing this. So so we need to figure out a way to get this apart. First I'm going to clean some of this gook off here so we're not dealing with this nasty thing and it's a little easier to work with. Alright, that's a little cleaner. We'll clean up the tube once we get it apart. I'm hoping this will work. So that's where the seal lives. Can't really see it, but that's the four notches down in there that would use the special wrench. There's an O-ring right there, hard as a rock. Likely, you could just put the new seal in and put it back together and replace that O-ring. I want to clean the rest of the oil out of here and check the rest of this rod to make sure there's nothing else wrong with it. So to get this apart, I've got to go through and through that hole, and there is a round clip in there we have to get out. Get it started. And it should just work up out of there. The nice thing too is it likely won't fall fly across the room because it's sort of captured by the tube. Now this should pull the rest of the way out. There's a shim on top of there too. It's, there's actually several shims so I'm just going to leave them on there so I don't mess that up. Actually looks pretty good. But we'll go ahead and clean the rest of this out and clean the rest of the muck out of there. This is the one that was hard to get out. That's probably why all that rust and corrosion and it's stuck in the steering head. So I'm going to spend some extra time try to polish that off. That is the seal. Should just pull out of there. Of course not. Seals out. Those are the four notches I was talking about. That's the seal I was able to find. 35 by 50 by 10. You can 
use a seal driver, but as long as you don't mess up the lip, this should work. There's the O-ring, that's a size 135. So this is what I'm going to use as a lubricant. Should probably locate the end near the hole just to make it easier next time. Hopefully there's not a next time. Pretty much all there is to it. Now we can put it back on. That grease is just protecting the spring, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to bother doing anything different with it. I went ahead and painted these. Be a lot, a lot more difficult to do while it's all together. And they had some bare metal spots on them. This just slides up through at the top of the spring spring hat on there. Actually, what I did on the other side, and shoved it all the way up in. Put the fork through it. Come on. So the problem is we have to grab the top of the tube and get it all the way up through. There is a tool available that will thread into there and help you pull that up. Since I've cheated and already done the other side, this is how I was able to do it. I just took one of the nuts for the top. along with one of the dash bolts and got it started in the top of the tube. Which it is. And 
hold it up just like that. That should keep it from falling down through. I'll pull them up the rest of the way and then tighten these pinch bolts and then we can get this part back on. Based on how difficult this was to get apart, I put a little anti-seize. Means I'll likely never have to take it apart again. Now that I've done that, a little bit there probably wouldn't hurt either. Should be able to snug up the steering head once I get this back on there's room to reach in there and then I can tighten them down after I've adjusted them tighten this pinch bolt down here a little more maybe that'll keep things from sliding down on there and it's lubricated this is a three millimeter well 20 millimeter ID and three millimeter thick o-ring That's tapered. This should pull this fork all the way up. Each fork all the way up. Get it in position. Then we can go down and tighten the pinch bolts the rest of the way. Going to use automatic transmission fluid for fork oil. I read somewhere that it's 5.4 ounces, so we're going to go right in there somewhere. There's five. We'll call that the point four. Go ahead and do the same for the other side and then clean this out real well and my wife will never know. So that's pretty much together. Just need to put the front wheel on. But of course, the more I look at this, it's becoming a slippery slope. I've got a little run there. I'll just have to wet sand that out after it cures for a while. Fork uppers look pretty good. The lowers showing some wear. So I guess before I put it back together, I'll go ahead and sand these and get them painted up. So my thought process is, I have the forks rebuilt, I have the fender off sitting here, probably going to get damaged. So I went ahead and purchased new tires and tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and get the whole front end put back together. So we're going to go ahead and get this tire off here and get at least the rim part cleaned up and then I'll mount the new one.
and I have not done a motorcycle tire in, I don't know, 30 years, more than that. Can't be too hard, right? <laughs> Hope everything fits. I also made a Sharpie mark which direction this is going to rotate. I believe the new tires are directional. I don't think the wheel cares. <clears throat> oh, she's good and stiff. As I said before, this could quite possibly be an original tire. My days of doing automotive tires. Need to push that down. To get it to drop down in the rim, which it is not one to do. Let's make sure this side's There we go. That was pretty much a pain in the ass. I also got new rim strips. So I'm gonna go at least clean the dirt off the rim part. And we'll see about putting this thing back on. It's the next day, I polished this wheel as much as my patience allowed. I did get a new rim strip. Likely could have reused the old one, but I mean, it was like $2. So, I think it should stretch on there. That'll keep any spoke activity from poking through the tube. At least it's as far as I know, that's the reasoning behind it. Also, purchased a new tube. I should go ahead and take the uh, core out of this. The nut for the outside. I'm not sure if I want to add any air to this. Like a bicycle, sometimes I'll fill a little air in it to help fill it in there, but I'm afraid in this instance that may not, that may hinder more than help. <clears throat> I've selected this as the rotation, although likely for the wheel it doesn't matter. But for the tire it does. Somewhere on here there's a rotation arrow. So the tire to rotate in that direction. Of course, there it is, right there. So I think what I'll do, go ahead and get one side of the tire on the wheel, and then we'll try to figure out the tube situation. Well, 
lubricate this a little bit. At least that's my thought. Sometimes you get too much stuff on here and it gets the doggone slippery. You can't hold on to it. So let's see if we can jam this thing in here without getting the tires irons out. So through some miracle, I managed to get the valve stem through there and get the nut on it. That was not pleasant. Now I've made sure the tube is tucked all the way under the tire, not hanging over anywhere. Because now is when you run your biggest risk of pinching that tube and doing this all again. That was easy, right? Now we'll get some air over here and see if it holds air. Should pop. All right, I believe it's on there. Of course, I'd probably have like 90 pounds in it. Let's see. Yeah, like 50, we'll, we'll back 50 pounds, we'll back some of that out. 30 should be good. While I was wrestling with this tire, I got distracted and got to thinking about the wheel bearings. Hate to go this far and not put some fresh grease in there. I do not have seals, but I had this pick out and I played with it a little bit. And it looked like the seal would pop right out and I can reuse that. So let's see what wheel bearing grease looks like. Actually looks pretty good and intact. I could take them out and clean them and repack them, but we'll just add a little to it. Same with this side. I guess next we'll go ahead and, ooh. Huh, not quite on right there. I guess next we'll bounce this a little bit and let this tire kind of find its home on here. Then we'll put it back on. Come on. 
Looks like it's fairly true. And there are pinch bolts. So we got the wheel on last night. Then I decided I should probably have that thing balanced before I go through all this trouble. Because this fender is like an erector set. So you have to like take it all apart, get it on, put it all back together. So my son was kind enough to take it to the Harley dealership today, not telling him it was on a moto goozy. And they checked it and it was balanced. It didn't need anything done. So got a free balance from them. Kudos to them. So now we'll go ahead and try to get this fender back on, get the brakes hooked back up. I don't know that I want to bore you too much with that, but the only way I could get it out was take these stays off, put it in there, and then reassemble it back on the bike. So we'll go ahead and do that. So those of you following along at home, you have to take the front reflectors off and feed it up through this way and not get the brake cables hung up in there. You could likely take these rubber little cable stays off, but I was afraid I was gonna destroy them and they're in decent enough shape. So you gotta come through from the back. And then, I think for a matter of reach, I'm gonna go ahead and put the fender stays and the reflectors on where I can still move it around a little bit before I put the bolts in down here. There we go. That front tire looks awful thin compared to what was on there, but there's not a lot of difference. If you, of course, realize this too is also off the rim, so it's going to be pulled in some. So this is a 4.0 by 18 to get a more modern tire. This is a 190-18, so the profile is a little bit lower conceivably by 10%, but it gives you a lot more choices for tire than the old imperial sizes. And according to everything I read online, that's, that's like the ideal size. Okay, so we're all back together on the ground. Still air in the tire. So next we'll move on to something else. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.